Well, hello again from Kingston. It's been just under six months since the Waban crossing was open for service. And in that time, you might think the work was done, but that's not the case. There have been a number of minor enhancements to the shorelines and to the river itself. And I'm going to tell you all about them. But before I do, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the excellent book which Paul Wash and I produced on the construction of the crossing is still available. There are a few copies of the 500 limited editions still available for purchase and you can check the description below for details on how to get one if you don't already have it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you find it informative and useful. Bye for now. We'll begin just one month after the crossing opened, noting the continued presence of turbidity curtains on both sides of the river. Any action to remove them awaits the dispersal of the ice. Below the east abutment, the nature of the frozen ground prevents the installation of the continuation of the new asphalt path. Significant snowfall late in January means that any real work is delayed until March. At this point, Inner Harbour Marine Services return to the fight, pulling curtains from the eastern shoreline. It will be another month before work on the western side begins. Considerable care is taken when stakes are pulled and the curtains removed to avoid any unnecessary disturbance to the environment. The work continues into early May. There's ample opportunity to demonstrate boat handling skills. As this video comes out, only the curtains immediately adjacent to the west end are still in place, for whatever reason. In early April, on the west end, Barr began a final infrastructure project. This involved creating a new access point to an existing infrastructure line. By installing a new vault. The saddle vault involved is packed with fine gravel and then finally concreted into place. With the vault in place, Barr's capable team turned to work on either side of the crossing on pathways. Using gravel delivered by an old and faithful friend. With a firm base laid, it's time for green infrastructure partners Coco paving to arrive and conduct final preparations for asphalt, which follows before very long. The result is a fine new pathway on the north side of the east end. Note the benches in place where walkers can enjoy a quiet view of the river. Not all of the work has involved hard engineering. Sharp landscaping 
took some time in April to introduce turtle fencing. The same hard-working team worked steadily throughout May to lay topsoil on both the east and west ends and to introduce hydro seeding to areas of the east end that had not received it previously. Within the last two weeks, the team has planted, watered and mulched new trees on the west end and completed the work of laying topsoil. This has transformed the area which is going to become a pretty little park. Overall, 2023 is proving to be another very good year for the Waban Crossing. And we should all take a moment to remember the extraordinary amount of work performed by everybody involved in its construction.